Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I believe that this is a good day to have a good day. I am excited, as always, to do our episodes. I don't have a lot of time today, so I'm going to try my best. I see my neighbors outside walking today, but I'm going to try my best to make this episode short because I have an appointment this morning, and it's a very important appointment to me because in all of the changes from going from fasting to eating um, foods and the different juices and and just implementing certain foods in my diet, constipation has taken a toll on me. And I'm sharing this with you all because it may have an effect on some of you. But for the first time in my life in 65 years, I'm having a problem with hemorrhoids. What? So I have a doctor's appointment today, but I knew that I would still do the juicing episode. And I also wanted to do something different. So what I'm going to juice today is cantaloupe. I have one cantaloupe here. So um, when I bought cantaloupes, when I bought all of my fruits and vegetables the other week, I had one left. So I thought I need to use it because we don't want it to go bad. And then I have two, four, six, eight apples and two bunches of cilantro. So I'm making a mixture here that I've never tried before, but I want to see what the combination tastes like. Now, normally when you do a cantaloupe, you should do it with another melon or um, some type of citrus fruit, like grapefruit or something like that. And you know what? I may just put a lemon in there. So hold on, guys. I'm going to get a lemon. But what I found out that I need to do as I age for my body is I need to... Mm -hmm, I started doing it on yesterday. So as soon as I got up yesterday and on my way to work, I had the raw blackberries. Instead of me doing blackberry juice, I decided I'm going to eat the raw blackberries because I need the fiber. Remember, I told us that when we juice, we can't not just juice because we do need the fiber. And I know that as we age and if we're not exercising and if we're not drinking lots and lots of water, then we need that fiber in our system. And so yesterday I started and I ate blackberries before I had my breakfast, which I didn't eat breakfast, I had lunch, but I had it anyway. I had blackberries first thing going in. I had blackberries along with my lunch yesterday. With um, I had cabbage for lunch. I had um, stir fried green peppers, red peppers, onions, and then for dinner, I also, because for dessert, my husband fixed um, turkey wings on yesterday in the Instapot. And so we had that with some broccoli and some um, noodles. Remember, I told you all about the noodles, and I believe that they're in the description box. But so I had that. Then I wanted some of those black bean brownies, which I know that they do something to my system. They constipate me. So I had blueberries instead of strawberries because I didn't have any more strawberries. I used them in the juice. So what I did, I had, again, blackberries as my fruit along with my black bean brownies and my cream cheese icing. And you know what? All day yesterday, as a matter of fact, my body moved twice yesterday and then this morning. Smooth move. Smooth move, guys. Why am I sharing that with you? So that if you are a person that suffers with constipation, you are on this juice journey with me. You are having some um, degenerative diseases going on in your system and you want to feel good. But as you integrate certain foods back into your system, you're feeling that you're, you're getting compacted. Make sure, please, by all means, make sure, guys, that you chew and eat some of these berries. And every day, Make sure that you get some black uh, blueberries in because blackberries are not always in season, but blueberries are as well as I've always seen strawberries in the store and at all seasons. There is so much information that I want to cover on today, guys. Today is a good day to have a good day in prayer today. The Lord reminded me of something that I wrote in my um notebook because always you know people say journal but it's just my notebook of uh, if he gives me a thought you know I can't remember everything he says to me and so I'll make notes and then I'll go back and one of the things that he said stop 
worrying about what other people are doing that's negatively impacting you. He said, because when you are always thinking about them, then you can pray for people. He said, but when you're always thinking about what they have done, then you will not hear me when I am trying to help you to correct the areas in your life that I'm not pleased with. Did you hear that? God said, get back in your lane, come and sit with me so I can tell you the things that you're doing that I'm not pleased with. Because then if we keep our focus on what somebody else is doing, what somebody else has done, then it keeps us from really addressing what's really going on with us. Because if all we see is what they have done to us, then we really don't see our real self, our true self. And it's good to feel good about yourself, pat yourself on the back. I tell us almost every day, love on yourself. But you also, in loving yourself, again, I I say it all the time, you have to tell yourself the truth. What are you observing about yourself? You know, if you were on the other side of yourself and you were seeing some of the things that you do, some of your motives, because only you know what your real motive is for why you do what you do. So when you sit with God, he's that mirror. He allows you to come and look in the mirror. In James, it says, don't be like the man who turned away, walked away from the mirror and forget what manner of man that he is. So let's do some self-reflection this weekend because it's Friday and it's no friends on Friday. The only friend I have in the room with me right now is the spirit of God and he is my best friend. Then the other thing I want to say to you all, I found out because I was in a um, seminar last night. And two things I learned, and I wanted to get the container. I'll be right back, but I'm going to keep talking because I wanted to see if it's true. Um, They don't, the, uh, I did not know that, um, remember on the, on the oatmeal boxes, and I won't get it out, but on oatmeal boxes, there's the heart, right? The heart shape. You know, I love when somebody came out with that thing. Oh, how do you do that? I don't know. But anyway, ah, well, I'll do it this way. So the heart shape, right? That's on the oatmeal boxes. That actually puts a subliminal message in people's minds that oatmeal is good for the heart, that oatmeal does certain things. And I found out last night that that's not true, that oatmeal is a high carbohydrate food. Mm. And I always wondered when I ate oatmeal that I got constipated. It's not a high fiber food because it's been processed. Now, this is just from um, the webinar that I was in on last night. So I'm just relaying information. And so I'm just learning because I want us to be able to, when we go to our doctors, the information that I'm giving to you, do your own research on it. But it's to help us make informed decisions when we talk to our doctors, when we talk to the nutritionists. Or when we talk to a dietitian, we want to be able to go in with knowledge of some sort concerning of some sort concerning our condition and what steps we're taking. Because you're going to the doctor to say, this is what I'm doing. These are the changes that I'm making in my diet because I am learning from Pause with God juicing that I have free radicals that are out of control in my body. And I need to attack them with antioxidant rich foods. This week we've talked about oxygen, right? We got to make informed decisions, guys. So the spirit of God told me last week, I need you to do this week and dedicate it to oxygen and anemia. Well, for me, I didn't even understand how much we need oxygen in the body because the oxygens, the oxygen in the body gets in the blood and helps the blood to flow to the locations that it needs to go, but it also helps keep all the cells active and alive. There are a list of oxygen rich foods. I gave that to us in episodes um, 33, 32. And so if you want to know about those oxygen rich foods, go to episodes 33 and 32. Now, I want to tell y'all that um, I did some, a little bit of research on anemia. But then I found out that anemia is low red blood cells in the body. Your your red blood cells are low. You're deficient 
in that area, which causes you to be anemic. And then that causes your iron in your body to be low. Now, one of the things that, now the juice that I'm making is not uh, iron rich juice. It may be, um, the cilantro may be, but I know that today I'm not making an iron rich juice, but when we do the green drinks, that is really good for your iron. And so, and it's good for anemia. However, we do have to make sure that we do our own research for whatever condition that we're dealing with. So I'm going to talk about anemia for a little bit, then we're going to juice. But again, let us love ourselves, let us be good to ourselves, and let us make sure that we are learning, we're taking in the information, and we're also doing research. If I tell you something, because when I found out that oatmeal, and I, I'm, I'm telling y'all, last year I was I was an oatmeal queen. I was having oatmeal and then I would put my milk in it and some um, coconut oil. And, and sometimes I would get the Irish butter and put the butter in it. And then in the area where I live in, they have farmers here that make fresh churned butter. So I was really excited um, about being able to integrate a little bit of butter. They have ghee, which is a type of um, butter but it's more of a, what do they call that? Vegetarian butter. Um, and I tried that, but I was doing that and trying to make it um, taste like what my mom's oatmeal and my grandma's oatmeal used to taste like. I'd even started putting um, canned milk, not coconut milk, but canned milk. And I'm telling y'all what, I had put on five and six pounds really quick, not knowing that all of those ingredients were high in carbohydrates which was putting on weight in my body. And when I backed away from it, I wasn't constipated anymore. Um, and I, the weight started coming back off. And so we have to be careful that we don't overindulge in something that we really, really love and we think it's good for us. So just that little tip, um, we can use oatmeal on occasion, but make sure that if you are having that oatmeal in your diet, you be sure that you are adding berries that have the seeds in it, seeds that you can actually see on the berries, like the blackberries, like the strawberries, like the raspberries. Incorporate that in so that it will not constipate you. It does not feel good not to be able to go to the bathroom because what you're doing, if you don't go, again, you are keeping all of that waste matter where the body is trying to eliminate those toxins. It's just sitting in your intestines and it's causing you not to feel well. So with all of that being said, let me keep it moving. So anemia. Um, anemia happens when your body doesn't have enough healthy red blood cells. The condition is mainly caused by blood loss or the destruction of red blood cells or your body's inability to create enough red blood cells. And this common type, or there are many types of anemia, but the most common is iron deficiency anemia. Red blood cells contain a protein called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is full of iron. Without sufficient iron, your body can't make the hemoglobin it needs to create enough red blood cells to deliver oxygen-rich blood throughout your body. So you see how the Spirit of God wanted me to talk about oxygen, but then he also wanted me to talk about anemia. For those of you who are dealing with low red blood cell counts or the hemoglobin coming from the red blood cells. I don't really understand it all, but as I read and do research, I'm getting a better understanding of it because I want to make an informed decision about my life as well when I go to the doctor and I say, okay, this is what's going on with me. This is how I feel. I'm not sure. I've done research. It could be this, it could be this, but what do you think? Let's run some tests. Can you run tests? Can you do x-rays if it's bones or pain or things like that? But can you run an extensive blood test, do extensive blood work on me, not just the basic things that my insurance will pay? Because sometimes there are basic things. And I'm telling you something that I learned this year in turning 65, which amazed me. Um, they didn't have me to do it, but they asked my husband to do it. They wanted him to take the 65-year-old um, injection. And I said, but we haven't done research on it. Before you take this out of the refrigerator and inject it in his body, 
Um, can we do some research on it to see the side effects of this injection, what it will do? Well, it's just something that he needs. But as I'm walking into your office, I'm seeing people older than I am that's all bent over and you're not helping them to be able to stand up straight. So why would I want you to give my husband um, some type of injection just because science or the medical industry says this is a 65 year old shot and then when I went for my 65 year old checkup my very first one my doctor um, sat and asked me a lot of questions which you know I'm thinking she's just being friendly but not knowing that in order for them to be paid they have to have the proper billing code so in that exam, when I looked over my paperwork, because sometimes we don't even look over the paperwork when we come from the doctor. But when I looked over my paperwork, it said that she had done a test, a depression test to see if I was depressed. So I called back when I read that and I said, well, when she did the test, what did I score? And she told the receptionist, tell Miss Douglas that I didn't do a depression test. I said, it's the first, it's on the first line of my um, diagnosis on today I said and she said oh no 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 that we did that um, but you scored well it wasn't even about being scored do you not know that a lot of times when we go to the doctor they have to be paid this is how they make a living we forget that sometimes just wanting you to make an informed decision about your life they get paid every time we go so in my age now i'm on social security but i also work so now in order for them to be paid the coding has to be correct so in them being paid they put that on my chart so that in billing they could be paid well they can't find something else so now this is how i process so if i had an emergency where i was not able to speak for myself and they pull my chart then the first thing that they're going to see several things is one she she deals with depression what no i don't but in order for them to be paid again i am telling you all make sure that you that's why i don't i don't for myself this is what i do for myself i'm not telling you to do it I can't take what the diagnosis is or what's on the paper and let that follow me through life. Because if I did, then that's a way that the enemy, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's a way that he will come into our lives and tell us that you have this, you have dementia, you have onset Alzheimer's, you have onset uh, degenerative bone disease, you have onset, what? All because you don't know the proper coding or a code has not been created. Why won't somebody sit and create better codes as we age? Because I am an active, vibrant 65 year old. I'm telling y'all what. And so we must learn to take care of ourselves. Yes, we go to the doctor. Yes, we want them to be able to give us a good diagnosis for what they believe, the information that we're telling them. But at the same time, I'm not going to let somebody railroad me into something that's not going on in my life. I'm not going to do it. And I don't want you to do it. I want you to be informed. I want you to live a healthy, vibrant life and love yourself enough to follow up and do research on what you're being told. And then look for the natural remedy for what it is that you've been diagnosed with. What can you do? But we know two things. The enemy to our body is free radicals. The, 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 um, the remedy to that enemy is antioxidants. So antioxidants go in and fight the free radicals that come in our body. And antioxidants come in food. Let's take care of ourselves. Let's take care of ourselves. And any of you out there that are dealing with COVID or are dealing with um, you having a cold or a cough that you can't get rid of or anything that's dealing with your respiratory system and you don't want to juice, but you like listening to me for whatever reason. And thank you all for my new subscribers, but you're listening to me. Cut out the sugar, cut out white flour, cut out anything white rice, white flour, any sugar, cut it all out because it's creating a lot of phlegm in your system. 
get you some fresh fruit. But I'm going to go on. So red blood cells. What are red blood cells and why are they important? This all ties in with the oxygen in our body. Listen at this. Now, I got this from the American Red Cross on their website because, of course, they collect blood every year. But they said this red blood cells or erythrocytes are one of the components of blood. The others are plasma, platelets, and white blood cells. They are continuously produced in our bone marrow. Remember, I had a hard time the other day finding out, um, you know, that, that term uh, that was in, uh, inside the bones. We think that the bones are just the white part that we see um, in, on a skeletory, uh, or skeleton um, of the body. But no, it is the bone marrow where the blood travels through to keep the actual bone itself the structure itself strong so it says they are continuously produced in our bone marrow just two or three drops of blood can contain about one billion red blood cells in fact that's what gives our blood the distinctive red color what is the function of red blood cells red blood cells carry oxygen from our lungs to the rest of our bodies they then they make the return trip, taking carbon dioxide back to our lungs to be exhaled. Now, wearing the mask. If you are not taking that mask off at some point and rolling your window down in your car, taking deep breaths and exhaling, then all of that carbon dioxide, which is a type of gas, which is poisonous, then we're doing more damage to our lungs. A lot of people tell me, yeah, you talk a long time. You, you, your lectures are too long or your episodes are too long. I tell you what, I believe for myself, I'm giving myself some good information and I believe I'm giving you some good information to make an informed decision about your own health when you go and talk to your healthcare provider. And a lot of times we're not seeing the doctors, we're seeing nurse practitioners. So go figure. So you have to now become informed. I believe that that's what the spirit of God is saying to the church, that you need to stop lacking knowledge and depending on somebody else to tell you who you are and what you're supposed to be doing with this temple that he gave us. All right. Red blood cells carry oxygen from our lungs to the rest of our bodies. So we have to have proper nutrients to kill off those free radicals that fight off the oxygen from entering the cells the, the way that they should. What does a low red blood cell count mean? A low red blood cell count known as anemia can cause fatigue, shortness of breath, dizziness, and other symptoms. Now, when we go to the doctor and we're short of breath, what is the first thing they do? They give us oxygen because obviously somewhere the oxygen levels in our bodies have dropped. Go figure. In many cases, anemia occurs when we don't eat a, a nutrient-rich diet. I'm going to read on from this paragraph, but I'm telling you, and I'm begging you, love yourself enough to eat clean, eat right. Stop eating dirty. What does dirty mean? All you do at the end of the day or during the day, you're eating on a candy bar. You're drinking a bunch of coffee with sugar in it and the creamers in it. Yeah, I said it. You're eating cakes and donuts and pies and um, you're getting the, the roller food. D did y'all ever notice that the stores that's on the corner that sell all of that roller food, after a while it, they came in and then we started seeing them be torn down and more drug stores were being put up because we were so busy not taking care of ourselves and we were letting somebody else choose the foods that we eat and because it's convenient we're running the store and oh can i get one of those um hot dogs because i did it can i get one of those frozen drinks can i get some of that chicken there oh can i get some pizza we don't know where it came from who who did who prepared it there's no vegetables nowhere and then they have a fruit a few pieces of fruit in the cooler section or on the counter and we're saying oh yeah well give me one of those or can i have some of that but 100%, I, I'm telling y'all, 90% of eating clean will help keep those free radicals away and help us feel better and help us to maintain a healthy weight. 
I don't know what a healthy weight is to you, but I'm telling y'all, I'm very passionate about this because there's too many people that are sick and that are dying and that have a very, very, very poor quality of life. Let's stop it. Church, let's stop it. Let's stop. Let's stop the madness because doing the same thing and expecting different results is called insanity. It means that loony, you're off, you're crazy. That's what I'm not calling you crazy, but I'm saying anybody that keeps eating like that, eating dead food, eating sugar rich food, eating icing lace foods, eating white flour based foods. Those people who do that, not saying you do, but people who do that and then expect different results and then wonder why they're sick, can't walk up steps, can't do anything and pretending like they're really taking care of themselves. That's called insanity. If untreated, anemia can lead to serious complications. In many cases, anemia occurs when we don't eat a nutrient-rich diet. Choosing foods that are rich in iron and other vitamins and minerals can help raise the red blood cell count. I am going to read the next one. Anemia can also be caused by pregnancy and certain medical conditions such as bleeding disorder and kidney disease. Talk to your doctor to determine the best course of treatment. Now, now, the best diet plan for anemia. Anemia happens when your body doesn't have enough healthy red blood cells. The condition is mainly caused by blood loss, the destruction of red blood cells, or your body's inability to create enough red blood cells. All right. So now listen at the foods that are good. An anemia diet plan. Anemia treatment plans often include dietary changes. The best diet plan for anemia includes foods rich in iron and other vitamins essential to hemoglobin and red cell, red blood cell production. Now listen at this. You mean to tell me that the God that created this body left out how to take care of and the foods in the earth that would help us produce red blood cells. He's too brilliant for that. I praise your name today, Father, because you are all knowing, all wise, and you have made us. We did not make ourselves. And so you know exactly what makes this body work. And you've given some people the wisdom to know what to really do to the body that will help all of us to be better. See, all of this information is free online. And yes, I'm passionate about it, but I'm also, uh, I have something in the back of my mind because I've got to get to the doctor to take care of myself. But guys, check this out. Now, listen, listen. What is it that we need to do? We need to take care of ourselves. We need to get off of all the junk. As we age, you know what? It's not going to get any better if you don't change and you're lying to yourself. People, your family members are telling you, you need to take better care of yourself. Your children are telling you, you look at you. But how can your children tell you if you're, you're not taking care of you, your children, this is what um, gener generational um, sickness passes down because our children are eating what we have fed them. And then when they start having health problems, it's because why? This is what a, a generational curse is. You didn't take care of it in your time, in your life. So now you pass that thing on to your children because they watch your behavior. They watch you. You fed them like this. Now they're dealing with more because they have doubled up on what it is that you were feeding them before. And now they're taking it to another level. And now they're sicker in their bodies. Are we understanding? Listen. We, mm, we need to stop thinking that we know so much when we don't, obviously we don't know. That's why we are learning what to do as we age. Come on, y'all. Take care of yourself. Love yourself enough to tell yourself the truth. We're in trouble. I was in trouble when I was diagnosed with cancer. I'm in trouble right now because I have hemorrhoids and I've never had them before. Why? Because I ate something that I had no business. And I'm going to tell y'all what it was. I had, and I showed it to y'all the other day, and they were so good, but they were not good for me because of whatever it is that they use to form. And it could have been white flour. I don't know because when I looked at the ingredients, the ingredients list did not say it said whole wheat flour. So now I'm eating this product, but that product compacted my bowel so bad 
And when my body tried to eliminate it, it wasn't enough moisture there to eliminate it. So I'm telling y'all, See, I have to do research on what's going on with me. Please do research on what's going on with you, but stop lying to yourself. Oh my God, my child is this way. And, but okay, so stand in the mirror and you and your child stand in the mirror and y'all look at y'all selves. I'm talking to everybody, all of us. We have to take care of ourselves. We really do. We really do. And our children, when they get on us, it's because they care about us. We're not taking care of ourselves. And we need to start. That's why we're pausing with God. Pause with God for a second. And we're going to eat clean. Now listen at this. An anemia diet plan. There are two types of iron in foods. Hemi iron and non-hemi iron. Hemi iron is found in meat, poultry, and seafood. Okay, so now for those who, you know, if you are vegetarian, then you really, really, really got to double up on the iron-rich fruits and vegetables to make sure that your hemoglobin, hemoglobin levels in your blood cells are in the right place and you're not anemic, but you still want to keep doing this because I'm not going to eat meat. Well, you know what? Until your body builds up those red blood cells, because that's dangerous for you. Because if you're not getting the proper oxygen to your lungs, to your brains, do you know what you're doing to yourself? You're causing more sickness and disease to happen to yourself. I'm just saying, please make informed decisions when we jump out and we want to, oh, I'm going to become vegan. I'm going to become vegetarian. Okay. I'm just saying. And if it makes you feel better not to eat meat, then by all means, do what helps you to feel better, but make sure that you're getting the nutrient rich foods in your diet. All right. <sighs> Non-hemi iron is found in plant foods and foods fortified with iron. Your body can absorb both types, but it absorbs hemi iron more easily. Hemi iron, hemi, hemi meat. Your body absorbs more hemi iron easily. Leafy greens. So now hemi iron is found in meat, poultry, and seafood. Non-hemi iron is found in plant foods and foods already fortified with iron. Leafy greens. Leafy greens, especially dark ones, are among the best sources of non-hemi iron, meaning plant foods. They include spinach. Now, we know that if you already have an issues with, see, there's a balance. You got to know where you overindulge or you're toxic in an area. You know that you, if you have that oxalic acid overload in your body, you can't have spinach. Kale, you can't have that, but you can have collard greens, dandelion greens, Swiss chard. Swiss chard and collard greens also contain folate. There's that word again. I love you, Father. A diet low in folate may cause folate deficiency anemia, folic acid, spina bifida. Come on. Oh, I love how he, this is how he does in his word. When we read his word and study his word, it's like a puzzle. He starts putting those puzzle pieces together. It's the same in our body. He is teaching us how to put the components together so we can be healthy and live a long life. All right. Some leafy greens, such as Swiss chard and collard greens, also contain folate. A diet low in folate may cause folate deficiency anemia. Citrus fruits, beans, and whole grains are good sources of folate. When eating dark leafy greens for iron, there's a catch. Some greens high in iron, such as spinach and kale, are also high in oxalates. Did I not just say that? Did I not just say that, y'all? I'm learning just like you're learning. So we have to be careful. It's like this, okay? We know that um, poison ivy is a green, but can we eat it? A lot of people would say, oh, yes, I'd make poison ivy juice all the time. And no, there's a lot of greenery that's growing around in our yards or if you or, or on the street. Do we pick it up and eat it? Not every green thing is good for us. So we have to know what we can eat and what we cannot eat. So while it's beneficial to eat your greens as part of an overall anemia diet, don't depend on them solely to treat the condition. Vitamin C helps your stomach absorb iron. Didn't know that. Vitamin C, remember? Now, look, you can go on the link on, the, um, on this YouTube channel, Pause With God Juicing, 
and you can go into the description box and you can order lipospheric vitamin C because the body doesn't make vitamin C. So here it is, those packets, you can order those. Go into the description box and order your lipospheric vitamin C so that vitamin C in your stomach and you take this on an empty stomach can help your body absorb the iron that it needs if you are oxygen and anemic deficient because I want us to be well. God evidently wants us to be well because he told me to do this. Yes, Lord. Eating leafy greens uh, with foods that contain vitamin C, such as oranges, red peppers, and strawberries may increase iron absorption. Some greens are good sources of both iron and vitamin C, such as collard greens and Swiss chard. We made collard green juice the other day and we put lemon in it. And what did it do? It tasted like um, Sprite to me. So guess what? I know that I have to make more collard green juice. Liver. Many people shy away from organ meats, but they are a great source of iron. Liver is arguably the most popular organ meat. It's rich in iron and folate. Some other iron-rich organ meats are heart, kidneys, and beef tongue. Go to your butcher shop. Find out where a butcher shop is in your area. There are several in our area. Go to your butcher shop in your area and ask them for this organ meat. Ask your older relatives, how did mama or grandmama or great grandmama used to fix this? I'm going to tell you, my mom used to take that liver and saute it in onions and she would flour it. But there's there's other types of flour besides white flour. You have almond flour. You have coconut flour. So you can make your own batter that liver in it and slice up some onions and it'll start making its own gravy. And you stir fry that and you're talking about some good eating. I might have to cook some liver this weekend. Seafood. Oh, shucky duck now, because that's my favorite. Some seafoods provide iron. Shellfish such as oysters, clams, scallops, crabs, and shrimp are good sources. Most fish contain iron. Fish with the best levels of iron include canned or fresh tuna, mackerel, mahi-mahi, pampano, fresh perch, fresh or canned salmon. Although canned sardines are good sources of iron, they're also high in calcium. Calcium may bind with iron and reduces its absorption. Did we know that? So now, if you are oxalic acid toxic, you know that that spinach and that kale are blocking you from absorbing calcium. So now, if you are anemic, you know that the high absorption of calcium and iron don't mix well together. We just learned that. So now where's the balance? Something has to give. So do you want, first of all, work on one thing at a time? That would be my suggestion or ask your doctor, how can you balance this out? But some of us have done so much damage to our bodies that now we have to start all over. Detox, three day fast with water and then start fresh. Three day fast with nothing but water for three days. Guys, I'm going to go ahead. Now, I'm going to give you some of these other examples of calcium rich foods include, but I'm going to go back. Calcium may bind with iron and reduces its absorption. Foods high in calcium shouldn't be eaten at the same time as iron rich foods. What foods you cannot eat while you are trying to build your iron levels up, getting out of that anemic state? Dairy milk, plant milks. Yogurt, kefir, cheese, tofu. So those of you who are anemic, are you wondering why you're having problems with the anemia? Because you're eating these foods. That's keeping the iron from absorbing into your body. The fortified foods are, but these are foods fortified with iron. Orange juice, fortified. Fortified orange juice. Fortified ready-to-eat cereal. But you got to watch and see how many carbs is in it and how much sugar is in it. Foods made from fortified, refined flour, such as white bread. Now, I can't, I'm going to leave that one alone. Because, see, this food was fortified back in the 20s because they were taking the whey protein off of it, which is the protein that we need to build up strong bones. Fortified pasta. So I suggest you all find fortified pasta that is made from greens. That's all I'm going to say. 
foods made from fortified cornmeal. Now, mind you, if you have that oxalic acid problem going on in your body, you know that you can't have cornmeal. Fortified white rice. So now, these fortified foods, I don't necessarily agree with. However, if you could have them in your body, I can't have them in my body because they convert to sugar. Sugar feeds cancer cells. I'm not trying to feed anymore. They are gone. They are dead in my body. So I'm not trying to feed them. But if you don't have that issue in your body, then you can have these foods. Beans, kidney beans, chickpeas, soybeans, black eyed peas, pinto beans, black bean brownies, peas, and lima beans. All right, guys, you can have nuts and seeds. Many types of nuts and seeds are good sources of iron. They taste great on their own or sprinkled on salads or yogurt pumpkin seeds, cashews. Now, when I was diagnosed with cancer, two foods that I ate constantly, I would get, oh man, I ate so many cashews for three years that I don't even, I don't even want to deal with cashews no more. I don't even like the taste anymore unless I heat them up. But I, I used to carry a huge bag of cashews because cashews, I did not realize that it was the iron, but the iron was causing the oxygen in my red blood cells to be elevated. Are y'all understanding? See, it all ties together. Um, pistachios, hemp seeds, pine nuts, sunflower seeds. Now, listen at this. So I told y'all for heart health, because I did show y'all the gift that I gave to my husband and I. So if we know that nuts and seeds are rich in iron, look at that. If you're getting your iron, you're also getting your oxygen levels in your body up. Order yourself this box of nuts. Go on the description box at the bottom of this video. Take care of yourself. And we're going to go ahead and juice because I think that this was very informative. I think I'm doing pretty good with time today because I do want to go and see my doctor and see what she wants to say about my situation of eating something that I had no business and not drinking enough water. And see, I'm telling y'all to do it, but I have to do it too. Because in my schedule, sometimes I forget uh, to drink my water. That wasn't all true. I just don't really like drinking the water. But now y'all pray for me because I got to start drinking more water and eating my berries, not juicing so much because it is convenient to juice as you go about your day. But please take your cups of your seeded fruits and nuts and eat those during the day because that's what I got to start doing. I was doing my nuts, but now I got to chew on those seeded fruits. All right, guys, I love y'all. And like I said, I got to learn to love myself. It's the greatest love of all. So love yourself. Let's love ourselves together. We're on this journey together. God helped me to overcome cancer and beat it and eradicate it out of my system. And now he's teaching me that I've also got to take care of my intestines to keep all of those to toxic foods out. See, I was looking for something convenient and that would help me and, and make me feel better. Again, we're doing Granny Smith apples. Granny Smith apples are high in vitamin C. They reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke. They fight cancer cells. They're high in potassium and they help you to stay full if you eat them. The other thing is the cantaloupe. The cantaloupes are high antioxidant foods. Um, it, it, it fights inflammation. It fights off those free radicals and it also helps with oxidative stress. The other thing is the cilantro and it protects against oxidative stress. It keeps, it helps fight those degenerative diseases such as Cancer, heart disease, arthritis, Alzheimer's disease, macular degeneration. So this juice we're doing today helps with the eyes. It reduces anxiety, it lowers blood sugar levels, and it supports heart health. It prevents urinary tract infections. So now it helps with the brain. It reduces anxiety. Um, and what else? It helps to lower blood sugar levels in the body. So guys. That is the benefits of the juice that we're going to do today. I'm honest with you all because I want you all to know that is everything in my life perfect? No. But what I do is spend time with God so that it won't stress me out. So it won't stress me out. I know that I have to take care of my body. I never tell y'all don't go to your doctor. You go to them, you tell them what's going on, and they will help you to understand what you need to do. Because I know she's going to say, Miss Douglas, you need to 
drink, well, the nurse practitioner, and I'm going to a new nurse practitioner because the other nurse practitioner that I went to when I was diagnosed with cancer, she is overbooked. Why? Because we don't know what to do to take care of our bodies. So now I'm going to pray for y'all. Please, please drink more water. Mm -hmm. Please, y'all pray for me that I drink more water too. I love you guys. And so we're going to go ahead and juice. I'm going to wash my hands. And then I'm going to get out of here. So guess what? I don't like using my dishwasher. I know it sounds strange, but I haven't had a dishwasher in 34 years. So, but today this bad boy is going in the dishwasher because of time constraints. I think I'm doing pretty good. All right, guys. So here we go. I'm going to do the cantaloupe first. Again, I have two, four, six, eight apples, two bunches of cilantro, two lemons. Now we know lemons are a good to help our alkaline levels to be raised. It also helps to keep the oxygen flowing through the system. So guys, love on yourself. I love you. We're going to make this juice. We're going to taste this juice. And again, go into the description box and make sure that um, you order everything that you know that you're going to need. If you want to contact me right now, the best way to contact me and send me an email to eating clean with Francine at gmail.com eating clean with Francine. Here we are eating clean with Francine at gmail.com. So now listen, if you're going to send me negative comments, you don't know that side of my personality. You might get a negative comment sent right back to you because but uh, if you're giving me constructive criticism, I'm going to thank you for it. And I'll mention it on the um, episode. But I'm telling you, I am already growing and trying to grow. And if you're not trying to grow and you watch this show to just be critical, then again, I'm going to say you're toxic. And that'll probably be my response to you. But I'm giving you that information if you want to contact me. If you want me to come and speak at your church, community center, nursing home, wherever, a family gathering, we can do some juice together there. But I'm telling you, if you want to just be critical, then you got to check yourself to see if you might be toxic. Because again, we got to start focusing on what's going on with us so that God can speak to us to help us change. That was the word I got today. All right, guys, gonna juice. I love the amount of water. And I think that's probably why I wasn't drinking a lot of water because I was getting the juice. But obviously, even though these fruits and vegetables have a lot of water in them, it, it is not enough to water H2O. I'm telling y'all, I love the lemon in the juice. And I hope y'all had y'all lemon water this morning because I certainly had mine with the moringa powder in it. I have to make me some more ginger juice. Then I'm going to put the bunch of cilantro in. And then I'm going to use, I have one more apple left. And I'm going to use that one apple, bunch of cilantro. Two, actually, it's two bunches of cilantro already rinsed off. I have my buddies in the window. My um, parsley is doing very well, but my cilantro is telling me, nope, you don't know how to take care of me. So I'm going to have to do some research. And you know what? I bought me a calla lily plant and it, of course, because I watered it too much, it died on me. And you know what? I wouldn't throw it away because my sister Daryl and love calla lilies, right? And now she's getting a new stalk. So I was so excited because I was like, oh, I didn't kill her off. Okay. So this cilantro is going to go in there. I'm going to push that down and then I'm going to put my last apple. Woo!
There we go. Ah. Now, they didn't say that this combination of fruit was going to taste that good. But you know what? We're getting our nutrients from it, right? I'm going to take my spout off because we're going to do dual duty here. All right, guys. I'm going to put some water in my sink. Mm -mm. Put my dish detergent in the sink and let that start filling up because I have somewhere to go today. I have somewhere to go every day. I have to work today as well. Yep. I always have fun when I do the shows. I'm going to get a spoon and stir this up. And I know you can hear the water running back there. Mm-hmm. Ooh, so the greens in the cilantro and the apple skin, that actually overpowered. But I'm going to stir it up really, really good. It's a beautiful lime green. Y'all know my when I'm going to make some new curtains for my house. And I got some samples of fabric coming. And I might get y'all to help me. I don't know. We'll have to go live one day when I put the curtain samples, uh, fabric samples up. But I got a lime green to go in here. And then I got an orange because I like bold colors. All right, guys. I love you guys. Please drink your water today along with your juice. So you won't be dealing with what I'm dealing with now. I love you. And I share my life with you because guess what? I want somebody to be well. So here we go. I'm going to taste this juice. Mm. Okay. So the two flavors that are coming through is cilantro lemon. That's not a bad combination there. I can't taste the cantaloupe at all because the cilantro and the lemon overpowered those two things in, in here. So, all right, guys, I love you. Love yourself. It is a good day to have a good day. God bless you. Oh, and one more thing. Listen, for those of you who are dealing with hemorrhoids, what I did was, because I learned this from Barbara O'Neill, my mentor in nutrition, I took a small cotton pad, not a cotton ball, a cotton pad, and I put castor oil on it and then I put it in the area. And you know what it did? Because castor oil is made from castor nuts, castor seeds. And so that oil is a has healing components in it. And you know what, y'all? I had a very good night's sleep. Went to bed. I didn't wake up till six o'clock this morning. So that's just a little tip for you. If you have a tumor or, or a nodule or um, what a what cyst somewhere. Get that castor oil and you can heat it up and put it on whatever area you have. Talk to your doctor or your nurse practitioner about it. Do some research on castor oil. Don't put it on your face, though, because it'll dry your skin out in that area. All right, guys, I love you. Have a fantastic day. Love on yourselves.